Hey everybody, Bill and Stacy here with Bonsai Keto. What's on the menu today? Meatballs. Meatballs. <laughs> yeah, we've been making these meatballs for a couple of years now actually. And if you want to see our original recipe, you can watch it above. But over the course of time, when Bill makes the meatballs, I don't measure things and I just kind of do my own little path in life, you know? And it drives <laughs> Stacy nuts because I don't do the measuring cups and I don't measure things out. But as I've been going along, secretly I've been writing it down. So as I make improvements and make changes, and I say, hey, what do you think of these meatballs? And she's like, oh, these are good, these are good. She's thinking I'm making a recipe and I'm really not. So <laughs> as the progression has happened, when I got to a batch that she just absolutely raved about and literally cleaned out the freezer, like all the Ziploc bags of meatballs were gone. I'm like, where'd the meatballs go? Did kids come home and kill them or? No, that was all space. <laughs> So once I knew I was on to something, I started actually writing it down because I knew she wouldn't even believe me if I did, but I did. So the original recipe that's in that video above and this recipe, two totally different animals. But don't worry, it'll be in the description and at Bonsai Keto, it'll just be called Bill's Italian Low Carb Meatballs. Now, um, the way I make them, and I've written everything down for everybody, super simple. Put it all in a big bowl and you mix it up. I've got two pounds of ground beef, one pound of Italian sausage, one pound of pork sausage. I'm using one cup of almond flour, three cups of Parmesan shaky cheese, because that's what we call it in this house, because you just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. And uh, to simplify, because again, I do not measure things, but I am measuring these and simplified, uh, one tablespoon of pepper one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of garlic, one tablespoon of onion, and five organic eggs. You couldn't get simpler than this. We're gonna mix this all up in a bowl. We're gonna make our meatballs, see how many we get. I'm gonna guess about 40 to 45. Yeah. I could be a little wrong. I like to make mine bigger. Stacy likes to make hers a little smaller. I think for the uniformity of the video here, we'll we'll, the I'll let Stacy make the meatballs. <laughs> Because I'll, I'll tend to go a little overboard. He does. But uh, once I have the determination of how many we can make from this, and my guesstimation will be around 40, give or take a few, I'll be able to, to take the total of all the carbs, proteins, fats, and calories and do the division on it to give you the breakdown. So that will also be on the original recipe, which will be in the description, and Bonsai Keto. And maybe I'll even be able to sneak it into the video towards the end of the bottom. But I don't know until I do this because I've always done this without measurements. Times and two. I've always done this times two. I make huge batches, like eight pounds of meat, because we make these for long lasting grab out of the freezer, the bag of three or four yeah. meatballs to take for work. And they taste amazing. Another key point is they are fantastic for freezing. I usually freeze my meatballs and then I take them to work in my Hot Logic, um, which is wonderful. Um, so I have a nice warm meal without having to fight for the microwave space or the uh, toaster oven at work. So it yeah, works out really well. If you're not sure what a hot logic is, it's just a little warming plate in a, a thermal type of a bag. I think it gets up to like 165 degrees. Yeah. It'll actually cook raw foods too, mm -hmm. but it's perfect for somebody who's meal prepping and having their, their meals ready for like a keto situation at work like you. Yep. And you don't go off course because you, you've prepared and you've brought your little meal thing. You don't have to use a microwave. A lot of people are against microwaves or they just want their personal thing at their desk or in their own space. Hot Logics are awesome. You have to check it out. We use it for camping as well as for you for work now. Yeah. I've even got my own because I don't want to steal Stacy's. But uh, yeah, we love those things. We have three of them total. <laughs> so let's make some meatballs. Let's see what they taste like. Let's see how many we get out of this batch of four pounds with all the ingredients and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so Here's the recipe and everything is here and we're going to make Stacy do the work since I did all the hard work of making the recipe. Oh, no, she just, <laughs> no, she just, she just offered to mix it all up because normally I just get the mixer out and put it in and do it in the mixture. But she was like, let's get the gloves out. Let's have fun. So she's going to mix up the two pounds of ground beef, the one pound of fresh Italian sausage and the one pound of ground um, pork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and depending on where you go, for me it was just Kroger, so I grabbed what they had. And she's going, she's going to mix it, well I'm going to add it, five organic eggs. Looked like a dice. <laughs> it did, <laughs> sort of. 
All right, so there's our five eggs. Now, remember when I was telling you about one tablespoon, right? Well, I've got one tablespoon of garlic, one tablespoon of onion powder and garlic powder. So we're gonna add that in. <laughs> gonna tap it in. All right, and this is uh, one, sorry, one tablespoon of kosher salt and one tablespoon of black pepper. I'm gonna add that in. Because I don't like to play games with these one and a quarter and, oh, no, that's not happening. You're lucky that I even tried to start measuring things. But once I've tried this a few more times and she just killed them, she didn't even tell me she killed them. She just ate them all. You I went to go. Me. I went to go get meatballs and they were all Come gone. On. I thought the kids did it. Anyway, uh, one cup of almond flour, because I am not an almond flour fan. I think your original recipe had three cups of almond flour. Just don't, I don't dig this stuff. But I did keep it in there for the texture and everything. And where I went hog wild, and I've done this on my experimentation over time here of many batches of meatballs until I got to this particular batch, uh, is three cups of shaky Parmesan cheese. I call it shaky cheese because that's just what we do with it. <laughs> Sorry. It's just craft Parmesan, finely ground or whatever. But that's not as fun as shaky. Shaky is more fun. Shaky cheese is more fun. Good thing we got a dishwasher. <laughs> make a mess. So I Stacey's, make a mess? No, 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 no. We're making a mess. Uh -oh. Making all this. So Stacy's sitting here mixing all this up and enjoying it. And then we're going to see what this four pounds of meat with all, oh, sorry. With all this stuff <laughs> will turn into for our, um, our trays. How many meatballs we're going to get out of this? You tend to make them a little smaller than I do. And that's fine. I now, like the crispier outside. Now, of course, this is real life. So these pans are really old and they look kind of rough, but they are what they are and they're they work. They're well loved and well used. They're well used and they're well loved. You're right. It looks like there's stuff on them, but they're just worn. They're just worn. Um, do you want anything on the pans? Do you want parchment? Do you want foil? Do you just want straight pans? Uh, I'd say straight pans straight is fine. Straight pans is fine. Okay. So what we're going to do is after she, she's almost got this done mixed and mixed up, we're going to get these made into little balls, maybe a little time lapse on that because it's going to take a little bit of work. And uh, then we'll see where we end up on how many meatballs we made out of four pounds here. I like my job today. I just get to sit here and <laughs> smile and chat with you. I've seen you more in this video than I have all day. You know that, true right? True story. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I made this another like two or three times and I did it by my measurements, which is what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. and, and she was just, you know, smitten with them. So she's so happy. So I figured, okay, now it's time to revise the recipe a little. The funny thing is when I warm them up at work, Everybody smelled, smells them. What's, what do you What do you have yeah. in there? Yeah. And I'm like meatballs. I'm like, where'd you buy them? I said, my honey made them for me. I made them for you. Yes, yeah, they don't have as much time at home as I do. I work from home here, so I'm home and can run to the you know kitchen here and get some things done like that. And she's always running around Costco or doing her reservations and yeah. body arts and things like that. Yep. Another reason I'm sitting. And not standing, uh, I have a little bit of a back injury right now, as well as I am so tall, when I stand up in this frame, you're going to chop my head off. So uh, <laughs> it's just easier to kind of put us at a, a common level. What are you, 5'4", five, 5'3 five, and a half? I'm 5'4". Five, 5'4". Four. Five, four. And a half. Yeah, I'm 6'6". Six, six. So when I stand, I'm probably well out of frame right now. <laughs> so it's just easier to sit with her. And have a chat with you guys as we're doing this. Absolutely. If you're still with us, <laughs> now Stacy's on to meatball number one. So how was your day, babe? It was good. It was good. What's the newest thing at Costco that you see coming through that you want to buy or get? There is a bacon wrapped jalapeno. Bacon wrapped jalapeno. Um, jalapeno and cream cheese popper type of thing. Oh, popper. Yeah. Have you looked at the label on it? No, I just I'm thought say, it see what it's like... Bacon and jalapeno wrapped mm -hmm. popper. Has it got cheese in it? Like cheddar or something? It's a uh, cream I'm cheese. Oh, I'm not sure what I would think of that. I, I would want a sample of that. Yeah. Tell Costco, I want a sample of that, please. 
<laughs> I have a piece of hair. You have a piece of hair. I don't know where. Ah, you got it. I got it. I don't know where it was, <laughs> but I got it. Ooh, you're making some good sized meatballs for me. I'm trying to make them a little bit bigger for you. I know you're doing it these way. I'm just curious. I don't know. And since I have all the time, I might as well get my handy dandy scale out. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. I'm going to touch a meatball. Stop touching my meatballs. These are one and a half. 1.5. That's pretty good, Stace. That was what your other ones were. You're like on target. I'm impressed. Now I got to watch that. I can tell by the feel. Of course, I can't reach the napkins. I just touched that and I don't want any of it on my hands. I told you to stop touching my balls. I know. I won't <laughs> touch your balls. Okay. That's pretty good. 1.5 ounces mm -hmm. is where we're at on these. If you wanted to play with the scale like I did. How about good. you preheat the oven? I'm going to preheat the oven. And um, the way I've done this, I've tried it at lower temperatures for longer times and it seemed to dry them out. And then I went up on the temperature and lowered the time a little bit and just been playing with it. Now we have a 20 year old fridge, uh, 20 year old stove that totally needs to be replaced. So your stove may vary and you probably can knock it down a few or up a few or something if needed. But for us, we're going to preheat the 440 and cook for 22 to 25 minutes. We tend to go a little bit longer, closer to the 25 because Stacy likes that crusty, She's a texture person. She likes to, to have that outer crust. Yes. A lot of people comment on our videos that everything looks burned. It's not. It's just the way that Stacey likes it. 30 years being with you, I know how to make your eggs. I know how to make your meatballs, whatever. So cut a minute or two off. Start checking it at about 21, 22 minutes. Yeah. Or drop your temperature to 425 if you want, if you're really afraid of 440. But we're not afraid of a lot of things in this house. We're not afraid of garlic. We're not afraid of pepper. Oh my gosh, we love pepper. And we're not afraid of cooking things a little bit more just to make Stacy happy. Happy I wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. All right, so bake. It's 440. And of course the thing is stuck. We really need a new stove. I know we do. So four and a half minutes to preheat it says. So I'll put stove on the list for Santa. Yeah. Maybe we could get that for me for Father's Day. Say, hey, Bill. And then I can return the favor and say, hey, Stace, for Christmas, <laughs> do you want a new refrigerator? Because that one's 20 years old, too. Yes. Hey, I, you know, I guess it's just a sign of getting old. You get excited when you get things like a new <laughs> water heater or something like that. You know, what was the last thing we fixed? The well. The, the well. well went, the bladder tank of our well went out. And uh, it was just constantly running and ruining the pump. So we had to replace that. And that not was... a fantastic shower. Once we got the no, new ladder, we the, had no the pressure. water pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had no pressure. Yeah. I, I did notice the pressure was going down. Yeah. And then I noticed that I could hear the well kicking the pump, kicking on constantly. I'm like, that's not normal. So yeah, our bladder tank went out. And that was 20 years old. Mm-hmm. The house is 20 years old. AC is 20 years old. Keeps blowing fuses. So we're going to be replacing that. Maybe this year. I just went and bought like six fuses because this is not the fuse, like the breaker downstairs. This is blowing fuses out at the AC. And I've talked to a couple guys and they're like, yeah, your, your motor is pretty much just when it draws and kicks on, it's tired and it's worn and it's blowing those fuses on you. We've done all the other maintenance and replaced the capacitor and uh, <laughs> definitely checked out everything, cleaned everything. And they're telling me it's, you know, it's time, 20 years. No idea what a new HVAC is going to be or whatever. A couple, couple grand. Yeah. Not looking forward to that. There you go. But you got to have AC. Five, All right. 10, so 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And I'm 35. not quite halfway through the meet. Oh yet. my gosh. We're going to make a lot. 35. So far, 35. So stands to reason that you'd probably have 35 on this if you have enough meat for that. Yeah. And you're about halfway through? Yeah. Sweet. <sighs> I don't like to touch the meat, so excuse me. No, the gloves me. are perfect. The gloves work really well for me. <laughs> the gloves work great. 
This works really good. And I'm compromising and making, well, actually probably about the same, a little bit bigger than what I like for myself. But. You know, when I measured it, because I was watching what you were doing, right on target at 1.5. So that's, mm -hmm. and this, I'd say three to four is a good lunch for you. Yeah. For me, probably four to five. Three is usually good for me. Yeah. And you don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I only have um, a half hour at uh, at work, so. Yeah, so you don't really get to sit down and just really eat and enjoy. But I will tell you, when I, I know when my lunches are going to be. We're pretty pretty scheduled um, at Costco. So I just put the hot logic on. So that way, when it's lunchtime, I can just go in and eat versus waiting for the um, yeah. toaster oven or the microwave. It's take about two hours for your hot logic to warm up. Are you going from frozen or are you going um, just from the fridge? From frozen because I take them in the morning. Okay. Well, they're not quite fully frozen by that point. They've started to thaw by lunchtime. And, and in that little hot jo uh, hi, uh, in that little hot logic, we're using um, the little snapware. It's just uh, plastic snapware. Mm -hmm. And uh, it won't hurt the snapware. And you could also use glass if you prefer to heat up in glass. Not for me. <laughs> they say you can use a freezer bag, but not a sandwich bag like the plastic right. bag that we put them in, um, you can do it in a freezer bag because I guess it's a little thicker yeah. and, and it won't melt in the Hot Logic. I never cooked it in the bag. I always just put it in a container. I put it in the container because that's where my sauce is at. Or I've even cooked stuff like, you know, a couple of hot dogs. I just put them in a piece of foil and I roll over the edges and put that foil in there and close it up. Those are wonderful. Our van has the 110 outlet in it. So uh, I, when I'm going on trips or anything, oh, there's our preheat. Uh, when I'm going on trips and whatnot, I will um, just plug it in, drive a few hours, stop, and have a nice warm meal. Mm -hmm. I do those. I've done those Atkins meals too. Uh, the Atkins that are kind of low carbish and, and whatnot, and you literally don't even take it out of the box. You put the box in the <laughs> Hot Logic, you plug it in. Can it be any simpler for Bill? That's why I love them. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not really a, I wouldn't say I'm a baker or any kind of a cook. I can experiment and play with things to make them taste good, like I did with the meatballs here. And these are darn good, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. And they smell wonderful, they taste wonderful, they freeze wonderful. They do. That's why when this batch is done, I have like literally the next four pounds of meat in there. Because at Costco, you're buying the bulk pack. I think it's seven or eight pounds of meat anyway. Yeah. So we cooked up like half of that, four pounds of that ground beef, and we put it into containers for like make a taco night and stuff like that. And then the other four pounds, we split that in half. Two pounds is in here. Two pounds is in the fridge for the next batch, for the off-camera batch, which will be the identical. Mm-hmm. The twin brother. Speaking of twin brothers, I watched this really neat thing. <laughs> Well, it, it was just, you know, just sitting here chatting as we're doing meatballs. It was, it was about, I'm going to butcher the name. It was something like Identical Strangers. I think it was, it was on Netflix and it's, uh, it was three brothers who were all uh, put up for adoption in the sixties, I believe. And what they did was they separated these kids. Aww. Each one of them went to a different family and they did it on purpose as a research project oh. to determine is it nurture or nature for the way that children are grown, or the, that they're raised. One was put into a very blue collar family. One was put into a prominent family with uh, uh, a doctor as the father. Okay. And the other one, I believe his dad was a teacher. And uh, they were all had very different upbringings, okay? And each year they were told by the adoption agency that they are just doing a study on adopted children, but they were actually just analyzing and studying the way that these three identical twins were being raised separately to see their commonalities or their differences. Was it their upbringing or was it genetically hereditary? Huh. As to how they would react and do. And they were like identical when they finally found each other. Really? It was a really, really interesting story. There were some fun parts to it and some sad parts to it. Aww. But it was well worth watching. I'm sure it's probably old and I'm like the last person on earth to see it. But <laughs> but it was good. It was it was well worth watching. Oh, very cool. This one guy went back to college and, well, he went to college as a freshman and everybody kept coming up to him and like, it's great to see you, Eddie. And he's like, I don't know who Eddie is. 
apparently it was his literally his twin brother who had gone there and everybody was thinking it was Eddie. It so wasn't what, Eddie. One was ahead of the head of the game? Just a year, I guess, or okay. something like that. But uh yeah, so they were all born on the same day. But and he was he was coming in as a freshman and his brother had apparently been there last year but said he wasn't returning. So everybody was coming up, hugging him, and he's like, you know, oh. being way too friendly to me and calling me Eddie, and I'm not Eddie. And I guess Eddie's best friend said to him, oh my gosh, you guys are doppelgangers. You have to be related. So, and this oh. is in the 70s, I think. So they like got in the car at midnight and drove to go to Eddie's house so that Eddie could see who this kid was because his best friend of Eddie's was saying, you and Eddie are like, you got to be related or something. And they got there, and sure enough, a picture of them there are looking in the mirror at each other. It was really cool. Neat. And then it got crazy. Then it got even crazier. Because there was a third one. Oh. And when that hit the, the newspapers and people started talking about that story, oh, are you going to hit 35 or are you going to have over? Did you just make 35? Done. So this made 70 total. Yeah. Correct. All right. So this whole batch with four pounds... Approximately 1.5 ounce per meatball, approximately, is going to make a uh, yield about 70 meatballs. So I will have the macros with all those. I have all the stuff, yeah. the, the total numbers, but now I have to divide it by 70 because I wasn't sure how many we'd get out of the deal. So that'll Yay. be that'll be on the recipe as well as in the description, as well as uh, now I can figure it all out and put it on the bottom of the, the video. So if you try this recipe... Let us know in the comments below. Is there anything that you changed, added, deleted? Or that you would add, change, or yeah. delete. Um, I personally, well, Stacy was my guinea pig. And uh, I think that this is a much improved and much better. I don't like almond flour. I do like shake cheese. So, and it's just simpler because I just, one tablespoon of everything else. So, I like it. Tastes good. I think it's going to so, be awesome. So, next what you're going to see, yeah, we're going to cook these up. At 440 for 23 to 25 minutes. For her, it's going to be more like 25. And you're all going to say they look burned, but they're going to have a crust to them because that's what she likes. And then we're going to come back for the final taste testing. See you in a bit. See you in a few. Well, there's our timer. It's time to pull the first batch out. 440, 25 full minutes for you because yes. that's the way Stacy likes them. So let's see what they look like. Oh, yeah, I see that. Ooh, well, it's 440. Yeah. I know. And your glasses are steaming up. Oh, yeah. It's got that nice Ooh. crust to it. Oh, they're yeah. so good. They're so good. I wish they had YouTube smell vision. <laughs> so you could just smell these. Mmm, they're so good. So, we're going to put to the second batch in. Yes. And uh, again, 440 for 25 minutes in our case with our weird oven. But, uh, <laughs> You might want to just start checking them at 21, 22, because you might not like them as crusty, or your oven might be cooked a little different than ours does. Yes. But these are amazing. Can't wait. Don't want to burn your mouth, but we'll have to try these in just a second. Oh, did you set a timer for these? I did. 25? Yes. They just came out of a 440 degree oven. Well, you know, we can... So what can you do... Except I for, like that one. Okay, you want that one. Look at that. Look at that. You can pick it right up there. Mm -hmm. Show the little crust. They're so good. Ready? At 440 degrees, sure, I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to cut mine in half. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. It's hot, but it's darn good. And the inside is very moist. Mm -hmm. For being cooked at 440, um, let me tell you, they're moist. We got those eggs in there, and I took that almond flour out a little, most of the almond flour mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, I just played with it and tweaked it, but these, I got to say, are a couple steps above even. And, you know, we were eating those fine yeah. for two years or so. Then I just kept playing with it. Oh my gosh, you have to try it. Oh. No, they're really hot. 
but they are darn amazing. And uh, I'll work in the macros on the sheet and everything, because now I know we have 70 out of this patch. Mm -hmm. So I'll be able to take all those prime numbers of the totals of everything and do the division and the math. And yep, they're all about 1.4. Um, 1.5. Yeah, 1.4, 1.5. Ounces. Yep. Just kind of get used to the, the weight of it. Yeah. Mine would probably be closer to two, just because I make them bigger. <clears throat> this way you get to enjoy more. <laughs> well, that's hot. It is very hot. I don't know how you're still eating it. <coughs> <laughs> it's not dry at all. They're moist. But, ooh, that got me. I could use a little drink. My little sunny cup with the little sunny straw. Can you tell we got kids? Mmm. <laughs> That's so much better. Look, clean fight club. I'm gonna wait a minute because it's really hot. They put my cheek. It is 140 <laughs> degrees, Stacey. It's just the way it works. That's the science. Well, they are fantastic. I wish you could smell them. Yeah. Again. I really, really hope you guys try these because uh, I think this newer concoction of many attempts and playing with things and then finally measuring it so that I'd have it right. Um, is a huge winner in my book. And when I noticed they were all gone that one last batch, I knew I had something with Stacy too. So mm -hmm. I played with it a little bit more and made sure I did measurements that were accurate to what I'm eyeballing and doing. And, and now I can share it with you guys too. I don't know what I'll fix next, but I'll change something next. <laughs> the pizza recipe or something. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I'm good with this stuff. So these, these, these are amazing. You got to try them. I know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow. If you're in Michigan, stop by, throw something in the freezer. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll share. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Again, let us know in the comments what you think, what you did, what you changed. If you tried them, please let us know what you think of them. Um, there's nothing wrong with the original recipe that we went no. up in the beginning. They're great meatballs, too. I just don't like almond flour. I prefer shaky cheese. And I don't like to play with all these like half and full and three quarters and I just one tablespoon of everything. Just simple and it tastes wonderful. So Very good. Very good. Yeah. And I up the eggs too. Yeah. And I up the meats. And I up the shaky cheese. And you I just down, changed my whole recipe. I changed the whole thing basically. But that's okay. They're good. My They're very good. are good. Gonna have another one. Now I'll work in the macros too. I promise. <laughs> we'll see you later. Have a great night. Bye guys. Bye.